there's some inflation plus fund targets inflation plus four over rolling three years. Um, second to that is the explicit protection of capital over any one year. Um, typical investors in this fund would be more conservative investors, investors looking for a, a diversified multi-asset class fund. And if you look at the last decade, Inflation Plus has delivered roughly about 10% per annum. At Sunlum Investment Management, we've got a one investment platform. Um, all the different portfolio managers um, leverage of the investment platform and where ideas get generated. Uh, in Inflation Plus, we use those ideas. We look at asset allocation. So directionally, we'll always be the same as the house. Um, the way and the magnitude of implementation might, might differ. Um, as an example, if you look at um, uh, long bonds, international long bonds, um, historically they've been at 4%, currently they're at about 2%, so we would be underweight. And why do I say that? Um, part of our investment philosophy, it's a value-biased investment philosophy, which also means we believe in a reversion to a long-term mean. Um, so that is part of the um, decision-making process um, when we look at asset allocation. The way we look at portfolio construction is to look at the relative valuation between asset classes. So typically that would be to look at, you know, what's the implied valuation for equities, bonds, property, and the likes. If you look at current valuations, equities um, are probably fairly valued, but if you look at nominal bonds, and especially domestic nominal bonds and domestic inflation linked bonds, they're definitely expensive on a long-term basis. So you would see us being underweight fixed income asset classes, whereas on a relative valuation basis, we like equities, and that includes domestic equities, but especially offshore, offshore equities. If you look at our international exposure um, on a relative basis, we like offshore equities. So you would see that our offshore equities are a bigger component compared to our domestic side. So offshore equities, we also like offshore property. So they're especially European properties. We've got no offshore bonds. We think global bonds are expensive. You know, these things are at multi-decade lows. So we do not invest in offshore uh, bonds at the moment. If you look at our allocation to offshore assets, um, we don't think we can forecast the RAND. Having said that, I think we've seen that the RAND can be volatile and we do have a healthy exposure um, offshore, roughly about 20, between 20 and 22%. Um, but we will use volatility to repatriate um, um, dollars to rands, you know, if, if there's an opportune uh, time. I think the one interesting point for me the last six months to a year has been our domestic nominal bonds. Um, as you know, we've been included in the um, World uh, Government Bond Index. That's led to massive inflows into the domestic bond market. Um, and you don't need to have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that that has meant our local domestic bond yields um, compressed quite a bit. Um, so much so that you know, it's the, the most expensive it's been in decades. If you look at our bond yields, it's the lowest it's been since the 60s. Um, so for us, from a value philosophy point of view, um, bonds are expensive. Our 10-year yield is now below 7%, whereas we see fair value probably at about between 7.5 and 8%. So if you look at the massive inflows, offshore inflows, you know, that, that affects valuations. And as value investors, um, we don't follow momentum. So in that case, you know, we, sometimes you're going to be wrong for a couple of months and even longer. And that's happening in this case. But the probability of making capital losses has increased significantly for investors.